is going on, ladies and gentlemen. You must be in heaven because it's episode 37 of the Switch It Up show. And heaven is a place we know as the Nindy Showcase, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Today, our friend Glenn and I will be discussing all of the Nindy titles that just dropped for the Spring Nindies Showcase. I got excited because I thought you said heaven is, and I thought you were going to break out into Tiffany and sing heaven is a place on earth. And I was, that, that's what I was I was really, to. really excited. I, I, was, I really wanted to do that. Do you think maybe maybe you can record just like the first part? I'll go on YouTube and I'll find like a karaoke, karaoke version and you can sing and we'll put it at the end of the episode for the people who want to hear, mostly myself. That'll be perfect. Okay, perfect. Good. 100%. Thank you. Until then, let's let the hot beats ride. Not Tiffany, but Ano Managuchi. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Ano Managuchi. So today, because it's a super stocked uh, event and we love the Nindies, you know that that's like our bread and butter here at the Switch It Up show. It certainly um, is. Yeah, but we're going to we're gonna talk all about uh, every one of the Nindies that came out um, in the Nindie showcase because there are always Nindies coming out that weren't necessarily featured. Uh, but today, ladies and gentlemen, the first one up is going to be Mark of the Ninja Remastered. Nintendo led the showcase with an announcement of Mark of the Ninja Remastered. Mark of the Ninja is a fairly old game here in 2018, as it originally launched in 2012 for the Xbox 360 and PC. Still, if you enjoy stealth games that don't come, they don't come much better than Mark of the Ninja and the enhancements. Uh, that the remastered label promise might make this worth checking out for those who have already played through the game once. I have not played Mark of the Ninja. I know it looks right up my alley. I love these kinds of like shinobi type games. Um, super in, super in. I do like some stealth uh, type games. Like I really liked, um, I really liked Hitman uh, when it, when it was out. Uh, I liked being able to like sneak around and like go after people instead of just like running in. Uh, Thief on PS4 was really cool too. Um, mm. So this might be this might be neat to check out. I'm excited and like I really like the artwork and the cutscene uh, for it. It was it was neat looking. I hope that it looks like that on the Switch. Yeah. Uh, next up is going to be a fantasy strike. Now I, I saw this and I was like, "This is Seth Trap because yes. you've been asking for a fighting game uh, for a while." Uh, it says fighting game fans will probably want to pay attention uh, to this one. Uh, this is basically it. Kind of looks like maybe a little bit of Super Street Fighter uh, Four. Uh, it's a lot of two uh, D fighting, uh, but like the animations on some of these attacks are really, really, really good. Um, yes. In the videos that they showed, they say it was in like pre alpha stage so there's still like a lot of work to be done but like when these characters like hit some of their special attacks like uh like it just looks absolutely insane uh and like the drawings and like the animations on it like they like it looks like it's got like a 3d like type of hand-drawn thing going on it just looks really really cool um and it's nice to see like a different entry because we have so much street fighter you know we have so much mortal Kombat. so this is gonna be this is gonna be really cool i'm, I'm excited for this one totally in for it yeah man totally. fantasy strike you know i'm looking for a good fighter i know um, dude i know hopefully our friends at uh nis are gonna be bringing some good ones to us soon I hope it's the SNK like what 40th anniversary, mm-hmm. dude. That's um, that's amazing. I mean, 1978 that thing started up. Insane. Um, yeah. The next game, ladies and gentlemen, this one looked super cool to me. It's Just Shapes and Beats. That's right. That's the name of the game. Just Shapes and Beats. This game is one of those sort of like infinite uh, bullet hell type games, um, where you just like shoot constantly at enemies and shapes. Um, it looks like a crazy amount of colors looks super modern i love those kinds of games where the music is really affected by you playing because it usually means that there's going to be a pretty awesome soundtrack um i'm definitely definitely in for this one i love the style of these things again um it's just shapes and beats yeah man this looks really cool super like ultra ultra modern looking looks neat 
Um, next up is going to be Garage. Garage is a top-down shooter. Um, it's basically like you're... <laughs> it's like a... It's definitely going to be rated mature, I think. It's neat because it's got this like type of like VHS like filter uh, over it. Uh, it says it's inspired by like B, like horror movies. Um, it's really, really crazy looking. If you play Dead Nation um, on like PS3 or PS4, it looks yeah. like it controls like that, where you just have like horror of all these different enemies like coming after you it's a twin stick like top-down shooter essentially um it looks like there's all types of crazy like creatures uh just like non-stop so uh it, it looks like a lot of fun i think these games are really cool it's fun the people over at tiny build we've reviewed a few of their games uh before uh in the past and they always do a good job so i'm excited to check this out and especially with like this weird like vhs it's got like scan lines in it to go through like it just looks it just looks cool man uh it's called garage i'm excited to check that out next one up is from adult swim games it's pool panic it looks like it's part platformer part pool game um because it's from adult swim games it it has this gnarly animation style that reminds me a lot of super jail uh if you guys were into that program i loved the theme song the super jail um little sometimes it got a little too crazy for me also i think they did mr pickles which i know you love <laughs> yeah i had to stop because that show got too, that it just it's too much it's too much that show's too much like it's, it's way too much <laughs> i can't even I can't, no. with it uh but pool <laughs> panic i think i absolutely could uh pool panic by adult swim games coming out uh exclusively first on the switch sometime later this year awesome dude it threw me off threw me off track there <laughs> next one's gonna be bomb chicken um bomb chicken it looks crazy um basically it's a side scrolling game um kind of like a little bit like better than i'd say than like 8-bit style graphics and uh you are a chicken in it and you lay bombs instead of eggs um not only do you have to defeat enemies but you have to like make it from one side of the you know of the map to the other so in that way it's kind of like sonic you know it's like you know push to the right and kind of just keep going um but it's it's interesting um it looks like it's fun it's super colorful uh it looks like if you're in the platforming and maybe like a little bit more this might be a game to check out uh it's bomb chicken next up i was so excited that this game got announced because you know i love a great basic puzzle game it's lumens remastered i was the biggest fan of lumens i played it on my xbox 360 back in the day um and i haven't really been able to play it since uh i it was on the psp at one point i know uh and the ps vita um and i think it was somewhere else maybe it's still on xbox don't really know all i know is it's coming to nintendo switch it's an amazing uh almost like tetris style game um where the way you play affects the beat um i i put so much time into lumens and i am going to put so much more time into it again as soon as it drops in may on the nintendo switch awesome man uh next up is going to be reigns kings and queens <laughs> now in this one basically you're just making decisions you are a like a monarch so you're either a king or a queen hence kings and queens and the idea is that you want to keep control of the monarchy as long as possible so it almost looks like what's happening is you're presented with like the choices it's like you know like i don't know like you know this person was found like in a town square committing a crime you know do we have them executed or do we let them go and it looks like you kind of either like swipe left or swipe uh right to be able to to yes. choose and then you have like a counter tinder the, level decision that, making it's exactly Bye, it and then you have like a counter in the top right hand side that says like how long how many years you've been reigning uh so this is a different type of uh game uh very much kind of like in that choose your own adventure slash visual novel um style and we love that style here so um i think this game would be uh really fun uh that is reigns her majesty or reigns kings and queens excuse me hey no worries there my guy uh the next one up is light fall um this game uh is one of the most stunning and fast-paced platformers you're gonna find like anywhere if you're a big fan of like old school sonic and just speed running things in general this is probably gonna be the game for you it looks like it's super quick um i haven't played it before it looks like it was released before 
um, and this is a port over. Or no, it's actually going to be an exclusive timed game for the Switch, oh. um, which is awesome because this game looks, again, beautiful. Again, another very modern, flat kind of game, but it looks smooth, looks gorgeous, and looks like you play super, super fast. That's Lightfall. Awesome, man. Something that looks absolutely just different uh is going to be west of loathing uh, i'm now apparently this was on the pc they say it's a part point and click adventure part turn-based uh rpg and in this one like all the characters all the enemies are stick figures and you are kind of traversing your way uh through uh the wild west fighting all types of like weird things um there's like horses that stand on their hind legs there's demon cattle um you're kind of just <laughs> they kind of throw in like everything uh in the in the kitchen sink and on this one um but if you like that type of like you know i don't know i guess like trying to be like cute like stick figure type games um i feel like there's a lot of them um this might be something worth checking out that's west of loathing i was pretty excited when i saw this game right? because it looks like it's like really really in depth for a stick figure game and it it, I don't know. Something about it seems like endearing. Yeah. I guess because of like the art style and it seems like the kind of game that someone was like a kid in elementary school and they were like, I'm gonna make this video game and they were like, No, we're gonna we're gonna make this exact video game that I sketched up when I was in elementary school. And just because the graphics are really simple doesn't mean the gameplay is not very, very good, you know? Like Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next one up is a exploration game but the idea is that you would do it with a buddy it's called pode um and you're playing as two unlikely travel companions um basically you're like an ice kind of stone and then like a lava kind of stone is what it looks like and you just have to go around solving these really whimsical puzzles i want to (coughs) say um yeah it, it looks it looks super cute uh, I love the idea, actually, that I would have to play with a buddy because if you go to our YouTube channel, you will see that I do love playing with a buddy. So super stoked that there's going to be a great Nindy game that's going to let me do that. It's Pode. Awesome, man. Up next is The Messenger. Uh, the Messenger really reminds me of uh, Ninja Gaiden. Um, you're OG platforming. Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, man. You're platforming, going all over the place, fighting these crazy bosses it, it, it's like Ninja Gaiden essentially on, on steroids. Uh, it's like it looks like it would have been on Super Nintendo. Um, it it looks nuts. Uh, if you are in the Ninja Gaiden, I feel, or if you're like, I feel like just watching this, like I feel like this game is going to be difficult. Like <laughs> this, this game, actually, like I I think I might have been the most like blown away by this trailer because they do something awesome where apparently like you have to go back and forth through time. And when you're in the past, it's an 8-bit game. But then when you jump to the oh, future, it so becomes cool. a 16-bit game. So that, was to me, was just, like, an amazing, like, touch and quality that is going to, like, separate it and yet make it feel so similar to every other, like, speed-running, ninja-blasting kind of game. So I'm super stoked for it. Yeah, dude, it looks awesome. The Messenger um next one up we have bad north uh it is again going to be exclusively timed uh for the nintendo switch this summer and it looks like it is a kind of tactical rpg kind of game um did you check out do you remember much about bad north uh so bad north uh, it's it's interesting because if i'm not mistaken you're like commanding like vikings uh, it looks very tower defending. defense style. Yeah. But what's neat is that like if you if someone dies, like they're they're dead. They're so, gone for good. So, you don't like, get that unit back ever. I've never played any like of the I think they're called like permadeath games, like permanent death. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But like I haven't really played a game like that before. So like I like that. It kind of like raises the stakes and makes you really think about what you're about to do. Um so the fact that this is almost like a tower defense type of game. Um it's weird because like anytime I f- I think of the idea of tower defense. I'm always like, that sounds boring. But then I play games like that, and I'm like, this is actually really fun. Uh, I and, love a good tower defense game. Yeah, like uh, I feel like they can be they can be a good time, you know, because sometimes so addicting with leveling up and all that. Yeah, but what's weird is that I feel like with the with the permanent death thing that this has going on, like you know, normally you're kind of just you know throwing waves and waves of people, and you don't really care, you know. But and this mm-hmm. one's gonna change that up a little bit, so a little bit different. Bad North. 
Good a job. unique uh, play style uh, on Bad North. Yes, definitely, sir. Um, so up next is uh, the Banner Saga Three. Um, people are losing their minds um, about. I'm one of them about this. Um, so this is obviously the third entry, hence the Banner Saga Three. And they did say that uh, they were going to bring the first two. They say it's a tactical yes. uh, RPG. Now I myself have never played either of the other two, um, but just looking no. at some of the footage that is in here. Like this is like like a beautiful like looking game. Like, Beautifully animated, much like um, what's the old Wol- game that was done just like this? Uh, I'm like, is it you thinking Wolverblade? No. Oh, you're uh, thinking Lair, um, you're Dragon's thinking Dragons like uh, yeah, like Dragons Lair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks exactly like that. Um, apparently, it's it's the same kind of way that like the Telltale games are, where if you play the first games first and then the third game the decisions you made and the way you played these characters will like turn up in their like character animations and again it's amazing because it's very very animated oh, style wow. of gameplay like this looks like rescuers like the rescuers level animation not yeah. down under straight up rescuers it looks it looks dude it looks really really good um it's a good example of like taking games up to that like art form level because it looks it looks crazy man super in yeah super super into it the banner saga not one not two but three although hopefully soon one and two (laughs) yes absolutely uh so ladies and gentlemen we're gonna go right into it we're gonna talk about our two big games that we reviewed uh this week and i guess i'll jump right into it by all means why not because i was super into it it's steam world dig a fist full of dirt ladies and gentlemen it is 4.99 currently on the e-shop marked down from 9.99 and you get 50 points when you buy it digitally it's from our friends over at image and form international um here we go steam world dig is a platform mining adventure with strong metro div metroid divinian influences Ooh. Take the role of Rusty, a lone mining steambot, as he arrives at an old mining town in great need. Dig your way through the old earth, gaining riches while uncovering the ancient threat that lurks below. Key features, a rich world of steam-driven robots inspired by steampunk and western themes. Explore an underground wonderful war, an underground world full of secrets, treasure, and terrors. Uncover the remnants of of human civilization and degen- a degenerate race of dynamite wielding troglodytes randomized worlds with emergent gameplay ladies and gentlemen i loved steam world dig this is not the first time i played steam world dig it's the second i loved the sequel um it turns out that the first game does end and it goes sort of directly into the sequel um the person that you were trading uh, all of your gear to, she is the person you play as in the second game. Um, don't want to spoil it. Don't want to spoil it for you. But as far as platformers and sort of adventure games go, this game is perfect for me. The music is fun and nice. Uh, there's not a lot of different variety in it, but it it's, it's perfect for the setting. Um, the enemies are at times a little difficult. You could probably get through the whole game without dying once maybe um i died a lot at one point because i forgot that you had to go get a different power up and i just kept falling and dying um turns out you need the power up that lets you fall further that's a that's a tip and trick for you ladies and gentlemen if you remember (laughs) the not defunct magazine um all in all the game takes maybe like five hours to play five and a half um, I think it's the perfect amount of time, though, to be honest. It's a quick five and a half hours. Um, the, it, like, like I'm saying, the, it, it's got upgrades. It's, it's got everything you want out of a great platforming game. This game, I've got to give it a five out of five. I love SteamWorld. Wow. Game. Five out of five, sir. I think it's perfect. Super cheap. It's got everything you want. Uh, power-ups, advancements, upgrades, collectibles, uh, there's a level of difficulty that makes it so that way it's not it's like anytime you do do bad or you die it's like that should not have happened this game isn't that hard and it just makes you want to play more and then just keep unlocking and keep doing better and seeing the different kinds of things you get so it's just so great 
five out of five. Awesome, dude. Hey, you know, you really can't you really can't argue with that. I mean, that's that's perfect. That's what you you know, that's what you want. So I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed that, my friend. Glad. I do. I love it. Would you play? Uh, so I uh, you know I took out my compass and I went north uh, this week. I played north uh, over uh, from the Nintendo eShop for the low low price of two dollars and ninety nine cents. That is a straight up bargain, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. I I gotta say. So in North, you play as a man who applies for asylum in a city filled with strange creatures and strange customs, dealing with the issue of contemporary refugee cri- crisis, while at the same time being being deeply rooted in a classical cyberpunk atmosphere a la Blade Runner, North features a dark synth pop soundtrack. It's awesome. A sprawling mega city and weird monster like inhabitants. They're really creepy. Uh, the game play is very straightforward and mostly consists of exploration and simple puzzles. The main difficulty is to understand what you have to do in order to get asylum. You've come from a foreign land in the south and find yourself lost and confused. A confusion you convey through letters to your sister back home. An important part of the gameplay, these letters help you understand your tasks while at the same time moving into the narrative of the game forward. Forward. Mm. Um, yeah, this is super, super interesting. Um, North, like I said, uh, basically you are applying for asylum and you have to kind of like live like day to day life um, as a refugee uh, in this like really like futuristic, ultra modern city setting. Uh, and, I, you know, I myself have never been a refugee, so I don't really know what it's like to to walk in those shoes, but um, this game does a good job at making you feel like you are somewhere strange. From the moment you start the game up, it basically says it's like, listen, there's no way to save in this game. Um, You know, you're gonna start it, and you're going to play it until it's done. They say it takes about an hour, so there's no way to kind of save. You just have to pick up and kind of experience it. Uh, And as you you kind of just start the game, you're in this city and you're just exploring. And eventually, you find out where your house is. You live with like three other people. It's super cramped. Everybody's either like like one person's banging his head on the wall. The other person is tossing and turning like in their bed and they can't sleep. Another person looks like they're dead. Like like it's just really like kind of off-putting you don't really feel comfortable like when you have to go to your house uh Mm. and you go there to like you know to i you don't sleep in this game uh but like it's there's only maybe four or five like quote-unquote places you can go to you can go to your house you can go to work um and it's interesting because you're going from one place to another and like when you go to work like no one really tells you what like you know what your job is but basically you go into like this like special area um you work in what looks like a factory and you have to turn on these giant switches there's like four of them um in in the area like in the level and you flip on these like giant switches and like these these machines start working but they're really far away from each other so you have to sprint back to the entrance of your of your like place of employment so you can make sure that you fill up your health bar again or you'll die so you're like <laughs> Like you're working in your fight and you're like trying to accomplish this like really hard what seems like pointless task and like you know it's almost killing you like each and every day um you get like these little letter things that pop up on the screen uh where you write your sister and you kind of tell her like what you're going through in hopes of being able to get you know like asylum um it's really weird like i said i don't know what it's like to be a refugee but i would imagine that if i was in a place like and i didn't really like know the language i didn't really know anybody um you know i had to you you have to work so you have to be able to support yourself and you probably don't have like you know the your dream job you probably got something else that you're that you're doing just to kind of make ends meet like this game like makes you or tries its best to like put you in that situation so it's not really i mean it's a game but i feel like it's almost more of an experience you know like i feel like this is something that you would see at like an art gallery and be like you know try this out you know like there's more there's more to this there's like a like a deeper story i don't want to like spoil anything for anybody and i feel like at the price of like two dollars and 99 cents i feel like this is a really yeah i feel like this is like a really like interesting way it's very like artistic um like some of the like scenes like when you first walk into uh there's a church that you can go to and it just looks like 
it looks like something out of that 1984 commercial, like super modern, like crazy, like giant eyeball up on the wall. Everybody like shadow persons, like just like standing around being ultra creepy. Like it's just, it's weird, man. It's trippy. Uh, and it makes, like I said, it makes you feel like you don't really have anywhere to go. You don't know what's going on. You feel kind of like just out of it when you're playing this game, which is how I would imagine. Like, you know, you would feel if you were a refugee trying to just like make it day to day, you know? Like, I feel like that's, like, the main, one of the, like, main points of this game. Uh, and like it's I said... It's an insane concept. Yeah, it's really, it's really different, man. Um, and like I said, because I feel it's more of an experience rather than, like, a game. That being said, some of the scenes in this, like, are really, really, like, breathtaking. Like, they did a really good job with, like, some of the graphics. I feel like I'm going to give this, uh, like, a four out of five. Uh, this is a okay. di- this is a different entry uh, on the eShop, but I feel like it's one that people should try out. Um you know, it's 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 two dollars ninety nine cents. Just the fact that somebody is selling, you know, like any of their work for that cheap, <laughs> you know, like is is I feel like you owe it to them to go ahead and try this out. If you're just looking for something different, um, this game is definitely up there. This is the most unique game that I've played like on the Switch like so far. Uh, I guess maybe it's a, it, maybe outside of Ace of the Seafood uh, of with, seafood, with right? fishes shooting lasers at themselves. Uh, but that being said, this game was this game was fun. Uh, I had a good time with it. I, I would definitely give it a four out of five. I recommend you pick it up for two dollars and ninety nine cents on the eShop, my friend. Dude, good week. Yeah, I think so, man. I think good week for games but what's everybody playing let us know ladies and gentlemen what you think of this week's picks our uh ratings for steam world dig and oh north <laughs> that's it my guy i look to you uh to give us uh the news and reviews and that's why you looked at us at the switch it up show uh for everyone here i have been seth trav he has been our friend glenn he's at from the crib together we are the switch it up show be sure to follow us rate us subscribe get to the youtube page type in preach search a bunch of different games we've got some awesome content up there um but from all of us ladies and gentlemen remember if things ever get boring all you ever have to do is switch it up